repeating. Think of the schoolmistress, the teacher, who's talking to Esther. Esther, I told you to please bring me that book. Esther doesn't pay attention. Second time, Esther, I told you to please bring me that book. And you know what happens the third time. The teacher's probably angry. Now, someone with cognitive problems may need to have that message put into other words because might not be really understanding what you have said the first and second time. And it has nothing to do with attention, such as the young student. There's something there that has not been grasped. So what you need to do is, the third time around, change the words. Don't get angry if you can. Change the words. The speed of speech is important. If you start to talk very fast, then the person isn't going to be able to follow you and won't know what to say. You see, you can't follow someone who talks too fast. You can't. I can't. But a person with cognitive difficulties really finds it difficult. And I'm not kidding you. Really finds it difficult. So not too fast, but not too slow because he won't understand the, or won't remember rather the first words that you said. So it's that medium rapidity of speech. Now, another strategy is that we do not use words that are newer words. And you know some of those words around the use of computers really are new words in our vocabulary. And I've just listed a few here, Twitter and Facebook and you know Apple computer. I mean, what's an Apple computer to someone who doesn't even know what computers are? And you just talk about an Apple computer? Well, he's going to think of apples, right? Not computer. And tsunami, like that's a fairly new word. I didn't know what a tsunami was till we had that tsunami out in the, in, in, what was it, the Indonesia, I guess it was, out that direction. So new words, the new words that have come into one's vocabulary should really be avoided. The length of sentences. Think in terms of six to eight words maximum. Okay? And I've given you a few examples. Let's go for lunch. Four, four words. Would you like to go shopping? Six words. Did you see Brian? Yes, he was sitting back there and he's gone. <laughs> Doctors are busy men. So, but just to give you an idea, six to eight, like that's really maximum. So if you have a tendency to talk in long sentences, as they say in French, oublie ça, cut it down. Make it short. The shorter, the better. Use specific words. And, and this is very important. If you're talking about going to see the film or the, the musical cabaret, right? and you're talking, we're going to see cabaret, it's coming to Montreal, Place des Arts, we're going to go see it, we'll see it tomorrow night, and we'll have lots of fun. And, oh, yeah, when we go see it, no, no. Because when you use the word it, 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 person's lost. What is she talking about? She was talking about cabaret, at least seemed to be, and now it's something it. So it means that you have to think of repetition. Okay? David, we're going to see cabaret. You know, cabaret is play at Place des Arts. We're going to go Saturday night, David, to see cabaret. Now, we don't talk that way normally, but you have to think about repeating what it is you're talking about. Now that looks good, eh? I could eat one of those right now. <laughs> so going on to when you talk about trains, cars, whatever you talk about, make sure that in your conversation you always come back to the subject. So at the bottom you can see that there are words you should really minimize in terms of their use. That place, it, he, she, they, them, their. Those are words that Yes, you'll slip them in, of course, but always come back and repeat what it is you're talking about. Now, we know these people, don't we? Sure we do. Maybe not personally, but some of you, although some of you probably knew uh, Mr. Mordecai. Well, I don't know. But 
When you use, again, it's when you see people use their names. You don't refer to them as he, she, just, I had to throw that in. And of course, Moses Maimonides, I mean, you know, had to throw him in, right? <laughs> okay. Two common problems of individuals who have cognitive related difficulties. And we've all experienced them, whether we have cognitive difficulties or not. We are, oh, we'll just carry on here. They're word finding and naming. So let's carry on here. Word finding, you can't think of a word. And you're speaking to someone, and doggone it, I can't think of what it was. I know it's that thing that moves, or it's that brown thing, and I just can't think of it right now. And you know that person we met in Palm Springs, and gosh, I can't remember. We all have that problem. But it usually comes back to us, right? Usually comes back. But someone who has cognitive problems, it might not come back. I've made a little note there that the brain contains our life knowledge. And what I'm really saying is that our brain has personal memories of events. We remember what happened when John Kennedy died, probably. We remember what happened. Uh, it's very important events. Usually we, we can remember what we're doing. Those are personal memories. But we also remember the historical events as a historical event. So we're accumulating all kinds of memory in, in our brains. So, the brain essentially is our word dictionary. It's our lexicon. The problem is that people who have cognitive difficulties tend to lose words. The words literally leave the brain. And those words are the ones that we learned more recently, the newer words. Right? Because they haven't had a chance to be sort of solidified in the brain. So another problem is calling pers a person by the wrong name. How many times do we speak to someone and, and you know, Solly, no, I meant Aaron, no, I meant Eli. It, it, it can happen to any one of us. And we realize it usually because we are able to correct ourselves. But someone with cognitive difficulties might not realize that they've used the incorrect name. Okay? So they might call Ruth, Sarah, or Marvin, Eli, but they don't realize it. So what do we do? I'll, I'll get to that in a minute, actually. Uh, just word confusion. We've talked a little bit about this, but word confusion. What's a mouse? Well, most of us think it's a thing that moves around and eats cheese, and, but it's a mouse is also something that's hooked up to a computer, right? This is a mouse, okay? But there are many people of a certain generation that still aren't quite clear on what a mouse is, other than that mouse that eats cheese. Twitter. Well, most of us have been used to the word Twitter in, in relation to birds, right? Birds Twitter. But today, what they Twitter is this stuff they do on the, on the internet or on the computer. I know my kids Twitter. I don't know about yours. I don't. And the Apple computer. There you are. There's another one. Okay, strategies for dealing with these difficulties. So if someone cannot find the word, they're trying, you know, I'm just trying to think of it. I'm, you know that place we went to? Well, try to help them, and maybe you'll be able to. But if you cannot, leave it. Just leave it. Do something else. Forget about it at the moment. It might even come back to you, what the individual was trying to tell you. Okay? And as I've mentioned before, the recently learned, less used words are the ones that are, tend to be lost from our brain dictionary. And what do we do if we call someone by the wrong name? Well, sometimes you can help the person slip in the right name. Diplomatically, always diplomatically. But you know, if it's not possible, leave it. Ruth knows that it, she was really Sarah. What, what does it matter? Or that, he, that when he called her Sarah, she was really Ruth, excuse me. Don't make an issue of it. It just isn't something to be concerned about. It happens to all of us, but it can happen more regularly to someone with cognitive difficulties and does. 